Well, if you're a Cummings Q series marine engine, then chances are you're using SmartCraft. And you could be version 1, version 2, version 2.12, 2, whatever. And there's even all the way up for a vessel view system up to version 7 now. And it's wrongly called smart crap instead of smart craft because engine men and mechanics who handle wires, that's not their thing. So it's complicated for them. So the less wires, the better they like it. But the less wires also means more solid state rather than hardwired logic. Wires are really reliable. And with this connector system that they use, which is only two different types of connectors on this entire Cummins vessel view system. Deutsch, well there's three, Amphenol, and then the, these right here are, you know, you can get them anywhere. They have so many different names, they've been copied by everybody out there, so I hate to even call them at what they used to be. But they're all fall underneath the automotive. And really, you can just go to Mauser and find them all. They'll be at your door the next day. Uh, granted, these, you know, these fancy ones right here, they're, uh, you know, probably 100 bucks each. You need two, one on each end, one for each, one cable, you know, two for each harness, which each engine needs a harness. So there's about 400 right there. These go for about 60 or 70 each. You've got to know what you're doing with all the pins. Some are male, some are female. You have to have these uh, sexy, you know, special type of crimpers, which is no big deal. None of this is really a big deal if your bases of yacht building are, you've done your core marine electrical engineering and your electronics technician early in your life and then when you, get, you have to use it here in the field while you're building these boats you don't have to slow down or pay any multitude of people that don't even know how to do it and they won't be doing it. you can't go to a man or a Cummins dealer and get this kind of stuff done these dealers don't know anything about that all the authorized dealers do they sell stuff even when they're rebuilding engines they're not rebuilding them they're sending them out chances are they're sending them to us so um Anyway, it takes me a couple days to build all these harnesses. This harness right here, you may recognize it. That's a little short one. Uh, it came off of a Navy SEAL boat, so I grabbed it just as an example. And it's, uh, you know, it's 1100 bucks. If you go to come and say, give me this cable. Plus, it's really hard to procure it because you really don't know what to call it. It has so many different kind of names and part numbers. Um... It's, it's really an uphill battle unless you, you know, want to apply two or three days full time to sorting all this stuff out. So first thing you have to do is determine through the quick serve for your Cummings what ECU you have and then now determine if it's 12 or 24. And then of course all this vessel fuse stuff, that's 12. So you better keep your 24 and your 12 straight. And then you now to have all your terminator resistors straight. There's one on one end and one on the other. It's not it's not a big deal. And uh, probably five thousand dollars worth of harnesses. I'd say safely I could probably make those for you for about two grand. Give me five or six days to do it. So um, in order to do that, you need to know the make and model number of your ECU. And this really can go for any engine. They're all fly-by-wire systems. And in the Cummins line, it's called a DTS, this particular engine. This is a, a government spec type engine, and it's uh, digital. So there is no cables at all. The signal to the transmission and the signals to the throttles are just tiny little millivolts of impedance changes. Um, so that in so doing, because it's millivolts, really small, you can't have any water on these connectors okay so right there you see that there's a little bit of green nah buddy that ain't gonna work you've got to take that connector off push those pins out use your fancy connector tool put new pins on stick them in there voila like new I mean like new buy the gold contacts and you won't have to worry about anything uh, what can I say? Uh, Boatyard San Diego, 
And, you know, for years we were San Diego Boat Electric, before that Sea Power, before that Power and Wind, before that John Knight and Eagle Carver's electrical engineers. So what I like to do now is build these engines, paint these boats, make the insides look like new. And we've got a couple acres here, cranes, forklifts, a lot of heavy equipment to handle these big engines. And I think you ought to give us a try. Send your stuff over here. We've got some references that'll, they really like us. And I think we save them a bunch of money and we make sure that everything is done top, top Navy grade. Like a professional marine engineer is inspecting all of our work or like we're sending our mother out there. That's it. That's just cold engineering and our sales pitch doesn't get any sweeter or sound any better than that. One thing we promise, if we got bad news and we're not going to suck you in with a low bid or tell you, oh, we can fix that, we can fix that. Dude, we're going to tell you when to throw it away or when enough's enough or when we can do just this to get you by. And that's it. There's, there's really no argument. <laughs> Uh, some of the stuff we do and rebuild used, uh, like autopilots or windlasses or engines or big 10 kW radars or satellite systems, it's worth it. They're cost enough where we're, it pays for us to get in, involved and fix that stuff. And a lot of times after we fix it, sometimes, honestly, I think it's better than the OEM makes it. They're in production and things change and we, you know, we're out here in the field. Nobody asks us. So when we see this stuff, it when touch it, it gets better than when the OEM sent it out to us. Uh, you know, there's companies like Caterpillar and Cummins. They're top companies. But really, all of them, when it comes down to the vessel and marine integration, they're all counting on others. Others like Glenn Denning, Mathers, Twin Disc. Um, I, the list goes on and on. There's new control company popping up every day because they all flying by J1935 data. It's just one data stream. Now granted, the Sea View and the SmartCraft system, it does have some drawbacks in the fact that they do change it from 1939 standard over to their own Mercury Sea View standard. And um, that's another process. So a lot of people think that because it comes out of the engine as J1939, then just why not go J1939 all the way up? And then up the top, you convert it over to NEMA 2000. And at that point, you don't even really need the engine manufacturer's displays. You can display it on any number of integrated plotter systems that will configure to a engine control window where they'll show you analog type gauges from the NEMA 2000 sentence that the engine, this little box right here, is putting out. Now granted, there's a couple other modules. That CVU system does have a lot of wires, does have a lot of junctions. But if you ask me, it's all needed. And uh, I would trust the wires before I would trust that little solid state, everything done inside, inside one microchip. I just, uh, I don't think that Mercury smart crap that some of the vendors have called it is fair. I think that's just the mechanics not really understanding or wanting to understand or to take the time to go to, you know, get their electrical engineering degree. <laughs>